as we pray together. You want to commit yourself to the Lord in prayer. The Lord will enrich your heart, enrich your soul, and bless you and refresh you to be more, more like Jesus. Grace to stand whatever trial and living every day to glorify His name. Pray that God will help you to serve the Lord with joy, with excitement. You're happy you're here. You're happy you're serving the Lord. And you're, serving, you're happy for the privilege to be more, more, much more than Jesus you had ever been. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this wonderful service. We thank you because we're enriching our lives with your word. The singing, the praying, the fellowship, the, the study together, everything has been a blessing and reaching every soul. And we pray that you'll reach us more and more, even at this time, in Jesus' name. Open our eyes as we read your word, that your word will impact your grace and your love and your tenderness and your virtues in every life, even today, in Jesus' name. That our worship will not just be worship as usual, traditional worship, doing what we ever did before doing the same thing all over again. But Lord, a new kind of passion, a new kind of love, a new kind of interest, a new kind of excitement as we come to worship you in Jesus' name. And we're praying that every need of our lives, spiritual and physical and emotional and social, whatever the need may be, we pray that you're going to supply in Jesus' name. And we pray we're going to receive strength out of your word. Speak to every heart, Lord. We pray that nobody will be left out and we pray that nobody will be absent-minded. We'll concentrate and receive everything you have for every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. And everybody said, yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. You can see that we're coming to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. I'm reading there from verse 16. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he says unto us a little while, and ye shall not see me? And again a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father, they said, Therefore, what is this that he says a little while? We cannot tell what he says. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, for the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I, sh I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man taketh from you. Yeah. And in that day shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever he shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. If that true, have, have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that time he shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray to the, the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and I believe that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father. 
and I'm come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye not believe? Behold, the hour cometh. Ye is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, yet I am not alone. Because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We're looking at the word of God. These were the words that Jesus Christ spoke. What he shared with his own disciples. It was a moment of sorrow, a moment of concern, a moment of pressure, a moment of pain in the hearts of the disciples of the Lord. And the Lord was trying to open up to them and tell them little by little and stage after stage the things that were coming. From the very beginning of the ministry when Christ had been sharing with his own disciples, he had been telling them plainly, but they never understood. They never understood because of the, of the impression they had, of the theology they had, of the opinion they had. What was their theology? And what was the understanding they had about Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah? They said, we have heard that the Messiah liveth forever. And because the Messiah liveth forever, and we know this is the Messiah, he is the Savior of the world. And because of that concept, and because of that idea, and because of that understanding, and because of that kind of theology, the Savior is here, the Messiah is here, the Christ is here, and he will never leave. And because the thought is there forever for them, in fact, they were now expecting that the kingdom will come that John will be on this side and James will be on the other side. They never knew that there is a program for everything and a time for everything. And now the Lord began to tell them very clearly and very plainly. He told them in proverbial ways and he said, For a while you'll see me. For a while you'll not see me again. And then you'll see me again. Then it surprised them. What could this mean? And they were not ready to ask him. They were afraid to ask him, what's the meaning of what you were saying? And because of that confusion in their mind, they were having sorrow already. And were being challenged already as to that sorrow. And as to what will come after the Lord had gone away. He was telling them, but you'll see me again, I'll come back again. And can I tell you that this sometimes is played out in the lives of the children of God. You know, sometimes it is that you have something and you think this thing is going to be there and it's going to be there forever. And then eventually the reality comes that the thing is gone. While the thing was there, you thought it would be forever. And then when the thing is gone, you also think it's gone forever. And because we don't understand the way of God and the plan of God and the things he's trying to do, confusion will come and sorrow of heart will come and body will come. That's why the Lord said, now you have sorrow, but your sorrow will be transformed and turned into joy. And when that joy comes, nobody will take that joy away from you. I thought you'd say amen. amen. As I look at this passage, we're going to talk about Christ's consolation and comforting assurance. The consolation of Christ. Christ's consolation and comforting assurance. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the perplexity and the period of sorrow. The perplexity and the period of sorrow. Number two, the promise of answered prayer by the Savior. He said, even though it was gone, they will ask what they wanted, what they desired, what they loved, and what will be a fulfillment of their joy in their lives. And the Lord said, he will answer. 
the promise of answered prayer by the Savior. Number three, the perception and protection by the shepherd. The perception, the perception they were to have and the protection they were to have given by the shepherd. Let's go back to number one, the perplexity and the period of sorrow. This happens in life. This is what you need to pay attention. And this is the reason you need to understand because if you don't understand this, it's not just the event that will bring sorrow. Your thought about the event, your understanding about the event, and your kind of uh, the, the surrounding events will, will bring so much confusion and so much pain and so much pressure and so much sorrow. You think that life will not go on anymore. That's the reason you need to understand and pay attention and see what Christ was telling his own disciples that even though they had sorrow temporarily, permanently, the time of joy will come. That is, the time of joy will be longer than the time of sorrow. And the time of joy and triumph and happiness will stretch out till eternity. But the time of sorrow is just a little bit moment, a little moment. The way I look at that is this, you have a white clothes, and then there's a dot, a little spot in that clothes. And when you look at it, if you're looking at that black spot, it will look magnified in your mind. Why don't you stretch that white clothes on the line, far away, and draw back, and draw back. The more you get detached from that little dot, on the on the on the clothes the more that little dot becomes smaller and then you go farther and farther away from that dot you get to the point you cannot even see that dot anymore shrink your sorrow and shrink your sadness into that little dot and then see the white white cloth the blood is spreading before you that's what the lord was telling them let me read it to you again from verse 16 the perplexity and the period of sorrow a little while and you shall not see me and again a little while and you shall see me because i go to the father the lord jesus christ was telling them very simply about his crucifixion about his death and about his burial and he said for that little while you will not see me just for a few days because I'm going to go to the cross and die. And then I'll be buried. But on the third day I will rise again. And I'll meet you in Galilee. And then you will see me again. And then I'll go to the Father. And when I go to the Father, I'll send the Holy Ghost unto you. Balance up everything in your mind. The Lord was concentrating on going to the Father. They were concentrating on going to the cross. The Lord was concentrating on when I get to the Father, I will send the Holy Ghost unto you. They were thinking of the physical loss of the Lord Jesus Christ that was to come to them. Where you put your mind, where you focus your thoughts on, will either bring you pain or will bring you pleasure. Where you put your heart on, on the cross, on the days, on the little while you will not see that's what is going to determine how you feel that's why i was telling them just a little while in verse 16 a little while and you shall not see me and again a little while and you shall see me because i go to the father verse 17 then said some of the disciples among themselves what is this that he says unto us a little while and you shall not see me and again a little while and you shall see me and because i go to the father they said therefore what is this that you say a little while we cannot tell what he says well but i thought you are disciples if you don't understand ask him I thought it was students of the teacher. This is the teacher come down from heaven. If you didn't understand, ask him. I thought your sheep in the fold of the shepherd. If you don't understand, ask him. But you know what? They couldn't ask. And they wouldn't ask. And why were they not asking? Look at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 44. 
Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Let these sayings sink down deep into your ears. The Lord said, This is very important. This is very essential. Let you sink very down deep in your heart. Then he said, For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. That's what he said. A little while, and you shall not see me. I'll be delivered into the hands of men. I'll be crucified and I will die. And the whole world will rejoice and they will say, We've gotten rid of him. He will not be able to fulfill what his thought is going to fulfill. His dream is gone. And his rulership, he wants to be the king, the king of the Jews. That is gone. His authority is gone. His power is gone. His future is gone. They will rejoice because the world will rejoice when you are sorrowful. They should have asked him when he said in verse 44, this is so important. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Look at verse 45. But they understood not their saying, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. They feared to ask him of that saying. And that's one of the solitary moments, isolated cases, when they ever express fear for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is so humble, he's so lowly, he's so meek, he's a friend. He said, you are my friends. Everything apart from the Father, I've revealed unto you. There is no cause to fear. You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. And I love you. Greater love as no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. How do you find a man like that? How do you, are you so afraid of a person like that who says, Everything I got from the Father, I lay open before you. And, he said, and then he prayed and said, Father, all these you have given me, none of them will be lost. Because I want to keep every one of them till the end. How do you fear a person like that, that is thinking about your best interest at heart? But it says, they feared to ask him of that saying. And the Lord had said that to over and over. He said it was going away. And then it will come back again. He told them. And there shouldn't be anything confusing here. We're looking at Matthew chapter 16 verse 21. Matthew chapter 16 verse 21. For from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how he must go unto Jerusalem. There is a must. From the beginning of the world, from the foundation of the world, from the creation of man, there is a must. And the must is that he will go to the cross. He will die for the salvation of humanity. It wasn't something optional. It wasn't something that God will have to change, might change his mind about. This was all determined from all eternity. And then he said he must go from Jerusalem.